we're asked to determine the critical numbers of the given rational function. The first step is to determine the domain of the rational function because the critical numbers are the x values in the domain where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. And the reason we care about critical numbers is that if the function does have relative extrema, they will occur at critical numbers. To determine the domain of the rational function, let's factor the denominator, where if the denominator does factor, it will factor into two binomial factors, the factors of x squared are x and x. The factors of positive eight that add to negative six are negative two and negative four, giving us a factor of x minus two and a factor of x minus four. So notice how here we have division by zero, which is undefined when x minus two equals zero and x minus four equals zero. And therefore we have two restrictions on the domain. We now know that x minus two can't equal zero or we have division by zero, or x minus four can't equal zero. So if we go ahead and solve for x, we have x can't equal positive two, or x can't equal positive four. So these are the restrictions on the domain. So if we wanted to give the domain using interval notation, we would have the open interval from negative infinity to positive two union, the open interval from two to four, union of the open interval from four to infinity. So now we know a critical number cannot be positive two or positive four because these values are not in the domain of the function. The next step is to find the derivative function by applying the quotient rule of differentiation. For the derivative function, the denominator is the square of the denominator of the original function, and we can use a denominator in either form. This time I'm gonna go ahead and use the factored form which would give us the square of the product of x minus two and x minus four. In the numerator, we have the denominator, and this time I'll use the expanded form of the quantity x squared minus six x plus eight. And then we have times the derivative of the numerator, which is the derivative of the quantity x plus eight minus the numerator of x plus eight times the derivative of the denominator, which is the derivative of x squared minus six x plus eight. And now to determine the two derivatives in the numerator. Actually, in the denominator, notice how if we square the product of x minus two and x minus four, we will have two factors of x minus two and two factors of x minus four. Another way to think of this is the exponents on x minus two and x minus four are one, when we have powers to powers, we multiply the exponents. And now in the numerator, we have the quantity x squared minus six x plus eight times the derivative of x plus eight, which is one, and then minus the quantity x plus eight times the derivative of x squared minus six x plus eight, which is two x minus six. And now let's simplify the numerator. x squared minus six x plus eight times one is x squared minus six x plus eight. Next, we need to multiply the two binomials and then subtract. So first we have x times two x, which is two x squared, and then we subtract. And then we have x times negative six, which is negative six x, and then we subtract. Minus negative six x simplifies to plus six x. Next, we have eight times two x, which is 16 x, and then we subtract, giving us minus 16 x. And then finally we have eight times negative six, which is negative 48, and then we subtract, which simplifies to plus 48. And now let's combine the like terms in the numerator. We have x squared minus two x squared, which is negative x squared. And then we have negative six x plus six x minus 16 x, which gives us minus 16 x. And then we have eight plus 48, which is 56, giving us plus 56. Now that we have our derivative function, let's record it above, and then we're going to determine the critical numbers. From here, the first derivative is undefined when we have division by zero, but notice how we have division by zero when x equals two and x equals four, which are not in the domain of the given function. And therefore, we are not going to list these two values as critical numbers. Next, any rational expression is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero 
and the denominator is non-zero, and therefore to determine the critical numbers, we need to set the numerator equal to zero and solve for x, which means we need to solve the equation negative x squared minus 16x plus 56 equals zero. Let's multiply both sides by negative one so that the x squared term is positive. This will give us x squared plus 16x minus 56 equals zero. And here we go ahead and try to factor. Unfortunately, there are no factors of negative 56 that add to positive 16, which means we will need to use the quadratic formula in order to solve the equation. Remember the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of the quantity b squared minus 4ac all over two times a. Where in our case, a is equal to one, b is equal to 16, and c is equal to negative 56. This gives us x equals negative 16 plus or minus the square root of the square of 16 minus four times one times negative 56 all over two times one. And now we need to simplify. We have negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 16 squared, which is 256. And then we have minus four times one times negative 56, which is negative 224, minus negative 224 simplifies to plus 224. All this is divided by two, which gives us negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 480, all divided by two. Now we need to simplify the square root of 480, which gives us negative 16 plus or minus the square root. 16 is a perfect square factor of 480, 480 is equal to 16 times 30. This is still all divided by two. Simplifying, we have negative 16 plus or minus, the square root of 16 is four, and therefore this simplifies to plus or minus four square root 30, all divided by two, which is equal to negative 16 divided by two, plus or minus four square root 30 divided by two, which is equal to negative eight plus or minus two square root 30. And these are the two critical numbers for the given function. Let's go ahead and list them above. And also notice that negative eight plus two square root 30 is approximately 2.95, and negative eight minus two square root 30 is approximately negative 18.95. So we do want to give the exact values, but when analyzing the graph, looking at the decimal approximations for the critical numbers will be more helpful. So before we go, let's look at the graph of the function at these critical numbers. Remember, if the function does have relative extrema, they will occur at the critical numbers. However, just because we have critical numbers does not always indicate that we have relative extrema. But analyzing the graph, notice how at approximately 2.95, we do have a relative maximum and it appears as if we don't have a relative extrema at x equals negative 18.95 here on the left, but if we zoom in close enough, which I've done here on the right, we can tell we do have a relative minimum at approximately x equals negative 18.95. I hope you found this helpful.